Hi everybody, it is Carl Brown again, and uh, welcome back to episode three of what is now going to be called Carl's Driven Life. Uh, due to some reasons uh, out of my control, I needed to remove the word Uber from, uh, from the social media tags and uh, names, and so now across all of the social media channels, um, it is Carl's Driven Life. So on episode three today, I have the distinct honor to ride around and talk to Luol Mahan. Uh, Luol has a very interesting story to tell. And as you know, the purpose of this uh, video is to interview the most interesting people in Washington, D.C. And uh, he definitely qualifies as one of those. So Luol, thank you so much for coming today. And thank you so much for inviting me. Of this course. Is, I mean, this is amazing. Uh, I really enjoy it. And, you know, it, it's very important. A lot of people, you know, we have to, everyone has uh, their own stories that need to be shared. And I'm really so happy today to, to ride with you and share my story because, uh, you know, it, it's something that is very important to me. Uh, Right. And uh, it, it is a very interesting story. So go ahead, you know, tell tell us a little bit about, you know, how you, you know, where you grew up and how you started. So, uh, first of all, I'm from South Sudan and South Sudan is one of the youngest countries in the world. Okay. And uh, we got our independence in 2011 and uh, from Sudan because it was like uh, the biggest actually uh, country in Africa, uh, Sudan. So, but because of the, the war that broke out in 1983 a lot of the southerners the people from the from the south sudan uh, where i come from like most of them were killed there was uh, so much genocide uh, from the sudanese people so we we try our best to make sure that we we have a random whereby we can be able to manage ourselves or get our own country uh, that can give us a, a refuge but apart from that i'm going to talk much about my own uh, my own story because uh, personally my my family was affected uh, by the war, right. uh, like that was in 1991 because it became like, it resulted into like a, a, a tribal conflict uh, between the Nuer and the Dinkas, uh, like us, you know, South Sudan alone has about 64 tribes with 64 languages. These are like some to my dad. Wow, that's yeah, crazy. That's really crazy. And we only have like about two biggest uh, uh, tribe that are actually used as a as a tool of conflict, some of them, you know, the government is using them to uh, to make themselves fight, so that uh, you know, this uh, and the rebel, uh, the same thing. Uh, but then, you know, my family had to flee um, in 1993. Almost, uh, you know, a lot of people were killed, a lot of people were displaced. Wow. But then, my parents had to had to flee uh, from 1993 to. They didn't know where they were going. They were just, you know. Um, you know, running away from the war, Absolutely, uh, yeah. making sure they are safe and making like, especially like my mother, because um, during that time, women w were not allowed to, uh, to, to, you know, to move together with men, because whenever they are with men, they will kill all of them or they will, uh, they will kill the men during, oh, the, wow. uh, during that uh, journey. So my, my father had to, you know, had his own long journey alone. And my mother has to, you know, to carry the children because uh, sometimes when they uh, when they go into the ambush of the rebels and they see these are women, then they can be able to um, have empathy on them, or you know, and leave them. Or sometimes they can. It depends on how you know how lucky you are. Right. So yeah, on the way, like um, I had my uh, my two sisters. I was not born that time, so my my two sisters and my mother. Uh, like my mother was with uh, with the sisters, so and then they were just you know it took them like years like to reach to northern Uganda, which was uh, their final destination. So on their way in 1993, I was born. So as my parents were like uh, playing uh, away uh, from from the war. So in what country were you bo actually born in? It was uh, still... I was I was born in South Sudan, but okay. it was right at the border. Okay. You know, I was just right at the border, like as. Uh, I, you know, I asked my mom sometime, how did you manage uh, fleeing at the same time and, you know, uh, being pregnant on the way when it is, it is really so hard for, for her. It was not easy, like, it was, um, it was not easy, even, you know, during the, uh, the birth time when I, when I was given birth, you know, my mom told me, like, it was really so hard. Uh, 
none of them believe that I was going to be alive until today. Oh wow! Yeah, because it was there was no food, was there was say, no water, the hospital. Was, yeah, yeah, there's, there's, there was nothing, you know. Like, and then you are running from the war. And then, like, um, you are also pregnant, and then you get, you know, just on the way, like you you're just traveling, and it was so hard. And that uh, that actually uh, th that that situation, like. Uh, uh, I, I was not born in a way that I was like, I was born and there was hunger, there was, so I didn't have like good feeding, so it, it's really affected my, 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 my life in the, in when I was from the uh, age of one to five, uh, you know, nobody knew I was going to be alive. Actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. So you really did have a struggle, yeah, not yeah, just, struggle, just, not just to just, be alive. Yeah, just to be alive, actually, even uh, today I, I can. <laughs> I can say like I came to realize that I was alive when I was like 10 year old. That's when I realized that I there's someone existing. It. Like I, I could remember there's some somebody like me. So it was it was really long. Uh, it was a long s a struggle uh, for my parents. Not only does it mean like the war, uh, also like the biggest problem was the um, uh, because they were in the bush. There was no water. There was uh, no medication. There was no there was nothing. Even the animals were so bad in a way that my elder sister was almost eaten by an animal wow. on the way yeah then uh, she was so lucky that uh, uh, there was someone in the bush that, that had a gun and then she when the when the animal jumped and tried to eat my sister then this man got up out of the bush and shoot the, uh, shoot the, the animal so from from all of that how yeah. did you start your journey to the united states uh, yeah, this is a, this this is a good this is a good question. Uh, actually, like um, my friend and I had to first go to to the refugee camp in, uh, in northern Uganda, and then we stayed there in northern Uganda. And then, uh, and you were in the refugee camp, uh, I think, for two years, right? Uh, I was in the refugee camp for, you know, I am twenty five today. I spent twenty three years in the refugee camp. Okay. Like twenty three years, like you know, when I was born, and then my parents came to the refugee camp. I was there until when I came to the uh, to the state, like uh, uh, last year. Right. So I lived like that that whole life in the refugee camp. Wow. Yeah. So how did you get how? So tell me a little bit, you know, about what motivated you and and kind of what started your journey into the U.S. and why you did it. Yeah, what motivated me a lot was I didn't have like that focus of coming to the U.S. first. Uh, first of all, like I, the war in South Sudan has been going through so many years. Even after when we got our independence, mm -hmm. we still like started killing ourselves. In 2013, there was war. In 2015, 16, there was war. A lot of people were killed. So when I was in the refugee camp, I was like, "What can I do to be helpful to my country?" Because when you look at my country, you have like 73 percent of the population is under the age of 30. Wow! In South Sudan. And these are the same people that are used to the tool of war. Right. These are the young people. These are like, uh, some of them, like they're like me, some of them were born in war, some of them were raised up in war. So their mindset, their attitude, whatever they, you know, whatever they think about it, war every time. So, but to me, I was lucky that I, I, I live in a refugee camp whereby I could have time to think about my life. I, I, I had time to, uh, uh, to, to execute whatever I want to do, though there was no resources. But I was like, no, this this should not define who I am. I have to utilize like I I have to utilize all the resources that I had. My mother, you know, loved me so much and she wanted the best out of me. So I told her like I need to I need to buy a computer. And she just laughed at me like, what are you gonna do with a computer? <laughs> and there's, there's no even power to charge it. There was no uh, there's no money. And for her, she had to spend like almost three years to get three hundred dollars for her to buy a computer, right. to buy for me a laptop. So she came and said, hey, Luan, this is your laptop. This is a laptop. And I was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. So where do I start? After she got for me a computer after three years. So like what happened was I started like, you know, training myself, uh, um, um, you know, simple basic computer skill right. by myself. But then through that, I, I I got a game like some a friend of mine. I went to Internet Cafe and he installed for me a game called GTA Vice City. Uh, Grand Theft Auto is one of the most uh, it's a little bit like a violent game, but it's not too violent. Right. Yeah. So like when I play uh, Grand Theft Auto, I was like, you know, this is a violence game, and I, I really like this game. You know, like how about I give, I make a game like this, which is a peace building that can be able to help my 
uh, my young people that are like 73 percent of the of the population in south sudan that can help them change their mindset so, so instead of instead of, of focusing yes, on uh, guns and killing exactly, each other they exactly. focus on peace exactly yeah, they focus on peace they know how to respond they know how to uh, to solve certain conflict right i was like okay this is really amazing like, let me start doing this so then i start like training myself doing my uh, online tutorial in the refugee come on how to make video game and then i created my first game wow in 2016 uh it's called salam like it was like a little bit of mobile game and so the the game went viral like people love it they're like this is a new uh this is a new era in the game industry oh wow and then from there i was invited to south africa for the first time in november 20, 2016 I could not believe like I, I was like what is happening like someone in the roof she come and I didn't know what I was doing so I went to South Africa talk about my game and then I connect with a lot of game developers and then they gave me a very good internship at one of the biggest uh, gaming company in, in South Africa it's called Celsius Game so they gave me the internship and I, from there I, I pick up and then in 2017 I, I, I work out and I, I, I was like you know working hard on my game to uh, to target a lot of people and then I I was invited to the U.S. to, um, first of all, I was invited to San Francisco to talk at GDC, which is the biggest gaming, uh, you know, convention uh, in the world. Okay. And in San Francisco, in, uh, that was in February 2017, before I came here. But again, I couldn't make it because of the Trump refugee travel ban. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't make it. So, like, I was like, no, this is... <laughs> This is not good. This is my dream. This is like uh, yeah. it, it, it wasn't my dream, but this is something like I, I I never dreamt of. Something I really want to be part of. So, but just being like uh, you know, ending up in such a situation wasn't uh, really good. But right. I couldn't give up. I, I really focused a lot. And then I, I my my startup after that, even uh, even after when I uh, uh, my I couldn't make it for the Trump refugee trouble then. I then uh, got nominated for like my company was taken uh, one of the best company in, in using technology for for social uh, for, for peace building right and that program was here in the state uh, with uh, peace tech accelerator United States Institute of Peace uh, Amazon web services all these five four companies C5 accelerator all of them combined together and they were you know they put in a lot some money and to bring me to the state and and give like um, a lot of uh, encouragement and uh, um, accelerating my business and I came to the US and yeah and that's how my journey started wow so, <laughs> so tell you know that, that that's crazy yeah. I you know it, it's so you know it's so interesting that it went viral and it's peaceful because so much so much of today and you're absolutely correct is focused on violence but you know the reason you all, the seventy three percent of the population is, is under thirty is because the rest of them have been killed because of exactly, war. Exactly because of the war. Yeah, yeah, and and so, you know, I think it's one of those things that they say if you keep on doing the same thing, you're going to keep on getting the same results. Exactly. So if you if you don't have a way to affect change and like you said, change the mindset of the people, the seventy three percent of the population is just going to kick to continue. So. Um, GDC, the game, I think it's Game Developers Conference. Yeah, the Game Developers Conference. Um, is there another one that, that that's coming up? Did something? Uh, yes, there's this one in 2019. In 2019. And this one in 2018, I made it to the 2018. <laughs> oh, good. Now, yes. how did how did you make it in? Yeah, because I already I was in the state, and then the the, the GDC organizers knew I was here. They was like, oh wow, this is really good. Uh, so uh, we did only invite you for 2017. We can still invite you for 2018, and I was there. Next year I'm going to be there, so like mostly like most of the year I'm going to be there because uh, it wouldn't affect me anymore. Right. Yeah. So you you won some kind of or, or there was some kind of, of rec, rec, um, recommendation yes. they did or something with you? Yes. Uh, recently I'm really excited. Uh, I just got nominated for Game Award, uh, which is happening on the 6th of December. Uh, in uh, Los Angeles, a uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Theater okay. in Los Angeles, and this is something like I, I could not believe, like uh, being nominated for the Game Award, which is like the biggest gaming award in the world. This is like Oscar, like this. Is, wow. This is like yeah, this is like uh, like big companies like Zelda, like Fortnite, like uh, Nintendo, 
these are companies that are nominated for that but like someone growing up in a refugee camp again like i really i i deserve it i know like i've really worked hard for this and the game industry i've really uh i've really believed in what i'm doing and that is who i am today they have really helped me a lot they've been collaborating with me and i'm not surprised for them to 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 surprise with me with such kind of news so right. uh, i i can't wait for it and uh, i can't wait for the 6th december and it's gonna be live on everywhere yeah. how about that yeah. that is just so amazing and you know the, the journey mm -hmm. i mean what a journey you know nobody can can possibly walk in your shoes and uh and, and have any idea about what it is to go from you know living in a refugee camp depending on another country for your survival to uh being nominated for one of the largest uh or for one of the uh, most recognized game awards in the industry so kind of tell me you know um Luol, tell me what the future holds for you what what, what do you have coming up other than the conference and what else is going on uh right now like uh that's a good question because um Right now, I'm just focusing on my game. You know, um, I just published my board game on my website. So if anyone wants to pre-order it, uh, you can go on my website, which is Junub Game. And you know, how do you spell that? It's J U N U B, and then Game, G A M E S dot com. Okay, J U N U B Games dot com. Yes. Okay. So like, uh, that's that's really my focus right now. I'm really planning to you know do more marketing for my game you know sell them and give them for free to, to the refugees who can be able to uh, to play the game wow. so and my main focus and in the future I'm, I'm seeing myself into like having the biggest uh, video game company that is using a uh, game for peace and, and conflict resolution because i i believe that a uh, true peace is something that is built over time it is and we need a sustain a sustainable peace you know, we don't just look into like South Sudan or some part of Syria, Afghanistan, and so on. Even in the U.S., we need peace. Even in families, we need um, we need a skill on how to resolve conflict. And the way we can do this is by building games, you know, by building products that can be able to engage people every day in in whatever they're doing. So that's that's really what I think about every day and see how you know how my journey is going to go. Yeah, sure to change try to change people's yeah, mindsets exactly. uh one one game at a time exactly, all. Exactly. um so if i recall you have been interviewed and been on several different um media outlets tell me a little bit about the the, the people that have interviewed you and the and the outlets you've been on so like uh, my f my first uh biggest interview i did was uh, with the neck whip so I actually that was my dream. I, I've been like when I, I was online, I've been next web is the biggest technology website in the world. Oh wow. Uh, they are, it's, 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 they call them the next uh, the news web. Uh, they are based in Netherlands and sometimes they do their annual conferences in New York. Okay. Uh, they they actually brought the first news about me when I was in the refugee camp. I have been featured on Al Jazeera almost three times. Okay. I've been featured on BBC uh, four times actually. And I've been picture on um, on the Boys of America uh, three times as well. <laughs> wow! Yeah. So and Shengnuo, Shengnuo in China. Okay. And then I've also been picture on um, Les Irock. Uh, that was this month actually. Magazine is one of the biggest uh, French magazine uh, in in French. Okay. Uh, and then I've been picture on um, Duplo in Brazil. It's one of the biggest video game. Uh, huh. Uh, news agency right also in Chinese also uh, in German uh, most of my articles are translated in different uh, in different languages sure and then uh, did I see something about CNN or yes um, recently we were finished something with CNN and uh, I can't wait for it to be out very soon yeah okay <laughs> I had some time with Jack Tapper he's, he's a really amazing person I, I like him and he managed to contribute back to what I'm doing and give his uh, his views on my games, which is really good to to hear from such kind of people. Absolutely, yeah. and and mm -hmm. and here I am, just Carl driving a car, mm -hmm. and I I've, I've got the uh, uh, a superstar in, <laughs> in the back seat. You, you're gonna be the biggest superstar. Like like to be honest, like you know, the most important thing is you know what you're doing right now is to me it's it's amazing. People need to you know people need to you know to 
to say whatever they have out, you know, that, that give them a relief. It might be a good news, might be a bad news, but as long as you share with somebody, that actually like help a lot. And that is something I've, I've never seen since I came to this country. And I, I, I really appreciate it. I really, I know like this is, um, sharing this story with you is something that is really amazing. And uh, I know you have saved a lot of life and you're going to do more and more and more and more. Right. And, yeah, yeah. you know, it's it's an honor to me to be able to find, yeah, exactly. you know, people like you mm -hmm. whose story needs to get out mm -hmm. and people need to embrace exactly. that kind of mindset versus all the divisive, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, things that that are going on now. At mm -hmm. the end of the at the end of the day, I said this to uh, I had uh, three nice ladies from Dubai mm -hmm. that were in the car. Yeah. But I said, you know, at the end of the day, there's one thing that unites every mm -hmm. single person in the world. We are all human beings. Exactly regardless of our color, of our language, of the country, of the location, of our religion, we all share that one singular trait that we are human beings. And, um, you know, it's just getting, getting down to the point of not what tears us apart, but exactly. what brings us together. Mm -hmm. So, Luol, I'm going to tell you, I, mm -hmm. I really, really appreciate you coming on oh, and, so uh, and sharing your dream. Um, so, the Jake Tapper interview, I guess, is going to be up when? Uh, I think next week. Next week. Mm -hmm. um, so is it going to be on his show? Yeah, it's going to be on his show, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we all have to, you'll have to uh, text me or something and is let me know episode? what yeah, day yeah, they're yeah, going to air it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because I'll, I'll, well, record, I'll record it and put it out on uh, on the uh, YouTube channel for exactly. everybody as a follow-up. Exactly. There's, there's, a, there's a lot coming up, very, uh, a lot. Uh, uh, I've done like so many uh, interviews recently, which are not yet out, but I will, yeah, mostly when you go to my website, you can also find what is coming up and share um, whatever you think about Game for Peace. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm going to have to get one for myself because exactly, uh, yeah, exactly. all of my friends, mm -hmm. they play oh, Call of Duty and, mm -hmm. you know, all of these uh, horrible uh, killing each other games. Exactly. And, uh, you know, it's one of those. I'd love to sit down and uh, uh, play your game with them and show them, you know, hey, what do you think about this? Exactly. So, well, of all, it has definitely been great having you on uh, Carl's Driven Life. Um, guys, you can check out Luol at Junub Games, J-U-N-U-B is in boy, games with an S dot com. Um, he's also on the social media channels. You can find him there. Um, always check me out. Uh, Carl's Driven Life on YouTube, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. I try to uh, I put fun stuff out there for all of us to look at, and um, keep 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 going with me and keep riding along because I've got somebody very interesting. Not as not maybe not as inspiring as Law, but I've got somebody tomorrow night that I'm going to interview that has an amazing product. Uh, that is just revolutionary that's going to completely either scare you to death impress you or just blow your mind so our next episode episode four will be up by thursday i'll have luol's interview up tomorrow uh, which will be wednesday and thank you all very much for watching subscribe like um, share and ride along with carl's driven life as i interview the most interesting people in washington dc have a great day Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Lal. Yeah.